I really try not to be too preachy on this channel. I don't like telling people what they should or shouldn't do or what they should or should not buy. However, I do suggest you take care of your car. It's a lot easier to take care of it and stay on top of it than it is to fix things after you haven't. And most of the engines that end up at this end of the shop are here because someone did something they weren't supposed to or they didn't do something that they were. And this is the case with this 2UZ FE. It's a Toyota 4.7 liter iForce V8 found in 5UP, Tundras, Sequoias, Land Cruisers, LX470, GX470, the 4Runner, pretty much everything but the Tacoma that it should have come in. And this engine has a broken timing belt. And I, I, Okay, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to realize that the belt is hanging out of the timing cover. I can't really hide that. This engine could have been saved. I don't know how many miles are on it. I wish I had a story with it, but it's got a broken timing belt and the belt looks very old. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm not sure what was ruined in the process. Sometimes it bends a couple valves. Sometimes it bends all of them. Sometimes it happens at redline and then really terrible things happen. Either way, someone replaced an engine when they could have just replaced the timing belt. They just waited until it was too late. Another shameless plug here, if you find yourself in need of one of these engines, a good one that has a belt on it, I have one actually. I have a 4.7 liter VVT engine in a 06 Tundra parts car. If you need anything off of it or you want to buy the engine, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. And let's talk about what happened here. Yeah, that's not cut. In the past, I have seen some timing belts that were cut in an effort to figure out if the bottom end was locked up or it was something in the head. Sometimes they'll cut the belt off and try to rotate the bottom end back and forth to see where the problem is. But this is not a cut. As you can see, this belt is really old. It cracks when you roll it over like that. It was just a matter of time. It almost looks like an original belt. There's some writing on it. I think this is an original belt. Again, I don't know Miles. I don't have a story behind it other than the fact that that's broken. Normally the first thing I would do would be to pull the plugs, which I'd love to do, but there's some secondary air injection stuff in the way. So we're going to go ahead and knock that off and then we'll get the plugs out of it and see if we can find any malice in the combustion palace. Uh oh, that feels bad. That sounds bad too. That is not how a plug is supposed to sound. This is why I do things by hand so that I can get a feel for what's going on. That feels worse, if you can imagine. It's coming out of it. Well, there's good and bad here. The good news is they're all the same kind of plug and they're not the wrong plug. The bad news is that there are some plugs that don't look so great. Like there's a lot of gap. Looks like it ran a little hot. And then there's some plugs that look okay and have normal gap. It's clear that these plugs were in there for a while. There are definitely some older plugs. The gap, in, the difference in gap is interesting to me. But I don't see any signs of carnage in the combustion chamber, nothing yet. I'm sure we'll find some though. Now I'm going to do things a little unconventional for me. I'm going to do things out of order and I'm actually going to strip the front of the engine to get to the timing belt because I want to see how that looks. I want to see what that situation is about. Probably my biggest fan. Right off the bat, I can tell that I can't just pull this out. Well, actually, I can. We're going to do that. Yep. Well, there's, there's one end of it. Can we pull the other side out? Yes, we can. That's the side from the other side. That was profound. Will there be more pieces in here? 
Let's find out. Broken belt tensioner. There we are. Almost. Now we'll get this lower timing cover. I know there's more bolts. Oh boy. I knew that belt didn't seem long enough. Here's the remnants, there's one piece, there's two pieces, there's three pieces, let's get this trigger wheel out of the way. Oh, that's it, so this check, let's check, that bearing's okay, that bearing's okay, the water pump doesn't have a bunch of play or resistance. So none of these things caused none of these things caused the belt to break. It was just an old belt. And while it does look like the front main seal was leaking, that crank seal was seeping pretty bad. It's not really wet in here. And the belt wasn't really soaked either. It's just an old belt. I suppose it's time we start cleaning up the top of this. We'll start with this little cover here. Some of this secondary air stuff out. Well, now we can start cleaning up the rest of this engine. We got the cut wiring harness. Whoever cut this harness, I don't understand. It's so easy to disconnect it from the inside of the truck. But they chopped it, so the harness is going in the wire bin. We'll get that taken care of, we'll get that off, and then we'll start pulling the manifolds. I know I shouldn't cut rubber hoses, but I am. It'll just make things easier. You should just buy new ones anyway. Now these usually fight you pretty hard. Oh yeah, that was, that was tough. For those that remember the last two you tear down, the starter is in the valley. And man, five has been here too. God, he lives everywhere. Anyway, here's where the secondary air pump is. It's underneath the valley. That never has any problems ever. They never go bad. I'm also being sarcastic. I've heard of problems with them, but it's really not that hard to pull the intake off of these. So I don't know if it's that big of a deal. Well, it's not super apparent what valves are bent, if any, on the intake side. I don't see any other major issues either. Just some signs of water, but this engine could have sat for a while. 
I'm gonna kind of clean this up. We're gonna get the dipstick out of the way. Hopefully it doesn't fight me. Get the exhaust manifold off. Some of this other stuff out of the way so that it's a little easier to get the cylinder heads off. Oh, here we go. You're gonna, you're gonna be easy. What? Well, that was easy. Oh, stop it. Next, we're going to remove all these water manifolds, thermostat housing, all this valley stuff, kind of clean this up a little more. Next, we're going to remove these uh, idler and the tensioner, get these out of the way, and then we can get the water pump out. Actually, I think all we need to do is take this one out, we can get the water pump out. Okay, that's tight. this water pump off. All right, let's give this pump a little, that wasn't even needed. It just fell right off. Except for this pipe at the top. Boy. It's really hard to say whether this is original or not. Plastic impeller, kind of get the aftermarket feel from the casting but i'm not sure it's got some crusties in here but you know the the overall shape of this water pump kind of reminds me of a pair of um a set of uh a couple of um what's the word i'm looking for fluid passages yeah fluid fluid passages that's that's what i'm looking for I suppose it's time we start cracking these valve covers loose. So let's start with the right or passenger cylinder head. Well, I was not expecting it to look so clean. It is really pretty clean in here. There's a little bit of oil discoloration over here, but the rest of this, this was, at least the oil was changed. They don't usually look this good without some oil changes, some regular oil changes anyway. Well, I kind of hopped the pistol here and I need to get this crossover pipe here. This is actually for secondary air. We're going to just get these 12 millimeters out, kind of let this hang and we'll get the air pump out of the valley here in a moment. There we are. Let's go ahead and get this variable valve timing cam gear out of the way. Now we're gonna get this 10 millimeter Allen headed bolt out of here. All right, the next thing we need to do is remove these Allen headed bolts, they're five millimeter, and we can get the cam gear out, get the backing plate off, pull the cam caps, and start pulling the cams. Whew, a bunch of stuff came out. The next thing I need to do is remove the VVT solenoid so I have access to all of these cam cap bolts. Hopefully these will come right out. Uh, old blue will get them out. Right? Right? Yeah. I would like to mention I did see that this head was at top dead center which makes removing the cams a little less uh, dangerous. Probably no explosions here. Sorry to disappoint. But we're gonna start cracking these cam caps loose. We're gonna start, we're gonna get this plate off first, and then we'll crack all these cam caps loose. Now normally I'd immediately grab my orange-handled hammer, 
which actually suffered an injury. And I'm looking for a replacement because this makes me really sad. However, one of the fans of my channel made me this. Actually, him and his son made me this, which is awesome. It's an aluminum headed handle. This is great. And I'm actually going to use this to knock this loose so that I don't damage this at all. This is all a block of aluminum, so it shouldn't cause any issues. Works good. Now it's time to crack the rest of these loose. In the event this head doesn't have bent valves, I want to keep it together when I'm done. So I'm going to save all these cam caps and make sure that they get installed or reinstalled in the correct order. Well, all of these journals look really nice. No signs of oil starvation whatsoever, no grooves, no major scratches, no signs of metal. It's in great shape. And the cams are also in great shape. No damage whatsoever. All right, time to crack the head bolts loose. Alright, this head should just come right off. Oh, gotta love a Toyota. No fight at all. Get this head gasket off. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Well, this looks pretty gross. It's a lot of rust, a lot of carbon. Nothing's adjustable when it's not supposed to be. The cylinders that were not exposed to water look fantastic. That one looks good. This one is pretty rusty. This one's pretty rusty too. It's a real shame. It's a, it's a big waste. It's pretty deep. It's definitely been a lot of water in there over time. Outside of that, it looks pretty good. I don't see any marks on the uh, pistons for making contact with the valves, which is what I was worried about. So let's go check out the cylinder head. The head looks good until you get to here. There's some sort of science experiment going on here. I didn't order any extra penicillin, but clearly there's some growing on here. Oh, why did I touch that? I shouldn't have done that. But the rest of this looks good. I don't see any bent valves. There's no signs of ingesting anything. There's no real damage to speak of at all. All right, now for the left or driver side. It's a little dirty on this side, especially towards the back, but I bet that has something to do with crankcase ventilation. Still not bad. Still looks pretty good. Same process for this side. This one needs a little convincing. Something else worth mentioning, this is the screen for the VVT solenoid, VVT system. And when these things have been run low on oil, these are usually filled with junk, metal debris from the bearings, from all kinds of areas of the engine that didn't get proper lubrication. This is pretty clean. It's a good sign. Now I'm gonna rotate the cams to where they are in the least explosive position. And I think I'm there. Now we'll crack these loose. Same story on this side of the engine. Cam journals are perfect.
Cams are also perfect. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose on this head. Should come right off. Let's get this head gasket off. It's the same story over here. The bores that didn't get any moisture look really nice. And the ones that did, well, that's a waste. But more oddly than that, I don't see any marks in the pistons from making contact with valves. So let's go, let's go check that cylinder head. I don't really see any obviously bent valves. Maybe, maybe these, but I don't know. There might be some marks there at the tip of that valve for making contact. But we'll run these through the washer at a later date and check for any other damage. Man, imagine if they could have fixed this vehicle by putting a new Tommy belt on it. Imagine. How would you feel? All right, now let's get the secondary air motor and pump out of here. Just one less thing to do later. Now we're going to talk about the elephant in the valley, and that is the starter. In the last video, I talked about how poor of placement this starter really is and how difficult this would be to change in the truck. And many of you made the point that these don't really go bad that often. And I would tend to agree with you. It's probably not a common failing part. However, I implore you to look into where the 5.7 liter Tundra starter is and then get back with me about how bad this is. I think this is easier. Pretty sure. All right, now it's time to flip this thing upside down and pull the pans. Is it gonna make a mess? I don't know. Not too shabby. First thing we're going to do is pull this little steel pan. Looks like it's dented in the way of this here so we can get a socket on it. I'm gonna use my pry bar. That's good. There's definitely signs of water in here. I don't think this engine ingested water. I uh, think that was from when this engine was left outside. Boy, that didn't sound very good. Go ahead and get the pickup, which has no debris whatsoever in it. And this tube windage piece here. We're just gonna get this out of the way so we can get the rods and pistons out of this. This all looks pretty tidy in here. I don't see any bent rods, any signs of any kind of carnage whatsoever. This is a well-oiled machine. Now, I can't get all of the rods and pistons out in its current location, and I'm going to assume that I can't rotate the crank because of the amount of rust, which I have sprayed down with some penetrant in an effort to kind of break that up, make this a little easier. But I can get four, maybe five rods out in its current position, so we're going to get what we can get out where the crank currently sits, and then we'll try to turn it over somehow. It's going to be a little difficult without the crank bolt. We're going to start with the first two cylinders because they are easy access. Another thing I really like about the 2UZ are these oil return holes. They're just perfect ratchet holders.
This is one of the rusted cylinders, and it is very, very stuck. It's not even budging. So, I really have no idea how I hurt this hammer. Well, we're moving. Ah, it's working. Okay, I think I can just push it the rest of the way out. Or at least give it little taps. At this point, I've got half the rods and pistons out. And thankfully, one of the rods and pistons I was able to get out was one of the very rusty cylinders. I only have one other cylinder that's rusty, and I think what I'm going to do is try to stick my punch in one of the holes in the crank and rotate it back and forth and try to use the rings to break the rust free. There's only one cylinder that's rusty to deal with, and I can't get to one of the bolts, so there's no chance of getting that out until I get this crank to turn over. Oh my god, it's so easy. Okay, I said that prematurely. Ah, there it hits the rust there. But we can get one, two, three more out. That's excellent. Let's get this one out, and then we'll, we can go back and forth a little bit. And I, I guess once we get this one out, we'll probably be able to turn the crank all the way over, and then the rest will be no problem. Oh, we're moving. Now we're really moving. That's not what I wanted to happen. All right, we're at the top of the bore now. I don't want to shoot this at the ground like I have in previous videos. Oh, almost did it. All right, now this should turn over pretty easy. Oh yes. That's excellent. All right, let's get the rest of these rods and pistons out. Well, I've given everything a brake clean bath. The bearings look perfect. I got some dirt and stuff on them from spraying everything else off, but they are perfect. I don't think this engine had a ton of miles on it. I mean, sure, it might have 150, maybe 180, but it definitely was well taken care of, at least with oil changes and with oil level keeping on top of that. And I also didn't find any signs of piston to valve contact. I cleaned all of these up. There is no signs that anything touched anything else. Now, I will say that there's a lot of misleading information as to whether these are interference engines or not. And the non-VVT engines are probably non-interference. I would say that you could probably cut the belt off of those at 6,000 RPM and everything would be just fine. I don't recommend that. But the VVT engines are interference, but they're not interference like a Volkswagen's interference. They're interference like it could happen, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to crash valves. This was really in good shape outside of the rust. We got some stuck rings in the lands from rust and water and moisture. But outside of that, this all looks really good. There's no major wear on the piston skirts. This was a good running engine up until the belt broke. Next, we're going to pull the oil pump off. And to do that, I have to pull this off. We'll get this out of the way, get the oil pump bolts out, and then we'll get to the crank. Oh, we got an Allen. All right, this thing had 12s, 14s, and a six millimeter Allen. Did, did Ford had something to do with the fasteners for this? I think I got them all. Let's give it a little, little tap. And finally, the main cap bolt so we can get the crank out. Oh 
little blue bar. Boop. As predicted, the main bearings look pretty much perfect. And I see no issues at all with the crank. This is a good condition crankshaft and I will be able to sell it. And this is kind of a shame because the bores that had no moisture or water in them, they are practically perfect. But the bores that did have some pretty big pitting in them. I can definitely feel this with my fingernail. I don't know if that would come out with a hone or not, but that was a waste. Some minor pitting in some of the other cylinders, but the bores had no moisture. They're perfect. That's pretty sad, actually. I'm not upset that I got a core, but that's a waste of a perfectly good 2UZ. And I was really hoping that the cylinders weren't going to be rusty, because if I had pulled the heads, I didn't see any bent valves, no piston to valve contact, I would have probably sold the short block or maybe even reassembled that engine as a good long block. But because someone parked that engine outside, which let's be honest, that engine was chopped out of the car. I mean, they cut the harness, they cut every rubber hose. And I get it, that's just how some places operate. What a waste. I mean, what a waste to throw a vehicle away over a broken timing belt. If you had put a belt on it, it would have run. And then Whoever got that vehicle in didn't do any real investigation outside of maybe peeling a timing cover back to see that the belt was broken and then just discarded it. This is what happens all the time. I've bought cars that people throw away because it needs a main fuse or a fuel pump or something super simple. It makes me sad and I guess that's part of the reason I'm in business. I like to save what's worth saving. If you'd like to buy any parts off of this engine or any of the parts off of that Tundra I posted at the beginning of this video, I'm going to leave your email in the video description. And man, again, I can't believe I'm at 100,000 subscribers. So I'm going to have a special 100,000 subscriber video coming out soon, uh, pretty close to the anniversary of getting monetized, hitting that 1,000 subscriber mark. Maybe a shop tour, maybe you get to see some of my other parts cars, some of my other project cars I haven't featured on the channel. All kinds of surprises ahead, but anyway, I appreciate all the feedback, all the comments, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.